So Jupiter's Legacy was cancelled, right? I did a video on it. We've discussed it. Uh, lots of people have said it was because it was crap. It's because it was way too much money, etc., etc., etc. Like I get it. I get it. But stuff has now started to come out surrounding why it was cancelled. Hence the title of this video, ladies and gents. Why was Jupiter's Legacy cancelled? Because actually, when you look at it, uh, a lot of people did like it. Nielsen actually had it on top of its uh, one of the top spots for streaming. It had a lot. Uh, of people streaming this show and there's a fantastic article from the Hollywood Reporter which they list several insiders and bits and pieces to do with the incredibly and it really is incredibly troubled production um, I'm listening to all of this I'm really wondering whether uh, Denight, the showrunner the guy who was behind this show uh, whether he will start to get work again to be fair, um, he's sort of dwindled from Hollywood and then he got relegated to Netflix and now even his Netflix shows have been cancelled um, but then as well like part of it is to do with Miller World on a whole you know are people actually interested in Miller World the deconstruction of the superhero genre has been done to death and this you know for what it was worth I didn't hate it I thought it had potential I thought it was a pretty dumb first season in terms of going backwards and forwards backwards and forwards they could have wrapped up that origin and progressed the story quite quickly. Um, but I didn't hate it, and I, I genuinely thought it had potential. So let's have a look, because a lot of people are like, it's because it cost $200 million. Well, there are some reports from it being $130 million to $200 million, but it's based on why. Why the show was so troubled that is pushing it and causing it to get to that $200 million mark. It has had so many issues, this show so many issues so the first thing to listen to here right is that they were genuinely genuinely trying to paint this and and that's what they're trying to do netflix with miller world is trying to combat and compete with disney marvel dc that's what they want they want a piece of that pie you know they are genuinely universe building ambitions to compete with disney ip heavyweights marvel and star wars it's not going to happen. It's just not. You know, it, it's unlikely you're going to find something that will be able to come, you know, compete with that. But here's the first sort of. Oh, let's have a look and see. So June second, Jupiter was no more. Uh, streamer informed the cast that they were being let go for the series garnered uh, a less than stellar thirty-eight percent critic scores on aggregator Rotten Tomatoes. Who cares about Rotten Tomatoes? Hollywood Reporter. You do yourself a, dis a disservice by caring about Rotten Tomatoes. It always baffles me why any of these mainstream media outlets give Rotten Tomatoes the time of day. They're such garbage. First problem with this article. First problem. But here we go, right? Here's the epic problems that have gone on behind the scenes. And they are epic, right? So Stephen DeKnight initially asked Netflix for a budget of $12 million per episode. That's cheap. That is actually cheap for a superhero show. But they pushed him down to under 9 million. Right? That, that's what they pushed him down to. That was the shooting budget that he had. Now, they do say here, long into shooting, or not too long into shooting, should I say, they did find themselves over budget and running behind. Right. So how much of this under 9 million was actually there and spent, we don't know. But you've got to remember this. If, he, if they'd gone for 12 million... Right, it wouldn't have looked as cheap as it did for starters. It just simply wouldn't, because they tried to get under nine million for the episodes. We can assume anyway they tried to get under nine million. Obviously, it looks cheap as a result of that, and then they went over. But if they tried to go for the twelve million that they asked, an extra three million per episode could have gone a long way. So that's Netflix being cheap again, much like with the Dark Crystal, um, which is not happening. We're, we're never seeing that ever again because they sort of cheaped out on it and obviously it was expensive like i get that but still you know what a, what a show to cancel of all the things you can cancel now like i said they do say it wasn't long into shooting uh, that the show found itself over budget and running behind with denight never wanted to shy away from speaking his mind according to people who have worked with him chasing uh, clashing with netflix over creative differences and that's the problem it's that word there i never understand why a studio will hire someone uh, and not clearly indicate their vision, not clearly acquire 
the person that they're hiring's vision either. How do you get creative differences in shows like this? Just how? There must be a rigorous interview process, surely. Oh, no, you're not right for the job. No worries. No love lost. See you later. We'll get someone else. It's not hard, right? Not hard. But anyway, there's even further stuff. So the production was shut down about halfway through. It's eight episode shoot. Uh, and Denight was replaced with Sang Q Kim, who then had to reshoot the first batch of episodes, or at least retool them. So Denight was basically booted off. And then he hired someone else. <sighs> problems. Problems, problems, problems. That's not small. Those are massive problems to have. Huge problems to have. Oh, you know those episodes that were set tonally a certain way? Boom, gone. We gotta get someone else. So bad. Now even more stuff, right? Even more stuff. Um, like a lot more stuff, should I say? So issues didn't stop there because even after wrapping production, the show uh, spent basically 2020 in post-production. How? Why? Like we were locked down, you could have got this done quite quickly. To be fair, uh, and Lu Louis Leterrier, the filmmaker behind Dark Crystal and Lupin was actually brought in as a consultant, according to sources, but the move was too late to save the troubled show. So they even had to get uh, people that Netflix specifically trusted to come in to go, hey, look, can you please fix this? We don't know what we're working with here. Again, it goes to that kind of creative difference problem. You know, Netflix clearly had a vision in mind. They clearly didn't indicate that to who they were working with. Uh, and then they end up with loads of problems. So with episode spends now reaching above even what Denight originally asked for, show insiders say he was proven right in some respects. This is what I mean, it is actually cheap. So Marvel shows are 15 million to 20 million per episode, Note One's producer, uh, working in the comic book space. If you're going to make a big superhero show, you need at least that much. I mean, that's cheap. That's cheap. You know, they cheaped out on this show and it shows. It really does show. So you get, you get someone in, you know, on board that shouldn't, basically been there and then you boot them off after trying to cheap out on the show and then you get someone else in and then and then you can't work in post-production and then everyone's like yeah we told you so what you're doing idiots uh it's unclear in what range the final budget landed okay so there's a netflix insider said it was close to 130 million but then several other sources have said no it's upwards of 200 million because of everything that happened in post-production <sighs> for eight episodes 200 million dollars that's bad that's real bad. Uh, all jokes aside, yeah, for eight episodes, nah, you're not getting your money's worth there. Now, anyway, they start to note very interesting stuff about executive shuffling, right? So to compound problems, Netflix then underwent an executive shuffle that saw Jupiter's Greenlighter VP original content, Cindy Holland, and its two original executive overseers exit the company. Holland was replaced last fall by industry veteran Bella Bajaria, who took the mantle as head of global TV, as is the norm with many a shuffle. Any project not part of an upcoming exec's portfolio will be scrutinized. Uh, unless the show is an undisputed hit, it's going to fall under the microscope. So there's a Jupiter insider, apparently. So again, they probably just looked at it and was like, this, this, nah, this is, this is no good. This is no good at all. And they did. So when Jupiter was cancelled, some observers presumed bad metrics. But this is the interesting thing. So Nielsen showed Jupiter a top of its streaming chart. So yes, it didn't have particularly great critics' reviews, but people, by and large, really did quite like it. At the very least, they were streaming a lot of it. 696 million minutes of view time in the week of May 3rd to the 9th. Better than Hulu's The Handmaid's Tale. That's insane. That is insane. Uh, another original series from Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, and Disney+. Plus. So it was incredibly streamed massively streamed in fact uh, and jupiter was for a while a fixture on netflix's own public top 10 chart visible to subscribers although that metric is vague and it is not clear if it's measuring fully watched episodes or smaller samples or just acting as a visibility booster i reckon it was probably there because people were watching it and then maybe because people wanted to axe it as it fell under this microscope they removed it i that's that's my guess now, Miller and Netflix spun the cancellation by saying Jupiter is going to be a universe with a new live action series based on an unrelated Miller comic titled Super Crooks, given a series order. Um, it's not actually. Uh, that is not live action. Uh, as far as I'm aware, that was supposed to be an anime, if I remember rightly. So not particularly great, but never mind. 
Uh, some say the fate of Juba's legacy has revealed that Miller World, despite being a creative IP factory in Miller, uh, lacks a seasoned producer or executive that can really steer the division. A Netflix insider insists that the company is invested in Miller World for the long haul, noting building franchises takes time that even uh, vaunted brands such as Star Wars and DC have stumbled. I mean, this is a real bad look for Miller World and also a real bad look for Netflix on a whole. It doesn't look like Netflix particularly is... Like, they, they don't care uh, about this Miller World thing. That's genuinely what it looks like. It doesn't look like they give a shit. I'm sure you will agree. Uh, in fact, it looks like they cheaped out on a whole straight from the start. And that's where the problem started. But please do let me know your thoughts down below. But this is basically why Jupiter's Legacy was cancelled. Because Netflix cheaped out from the off. You got the wrong people in charge, guys. The wrong people in charge. And you cheaped out from the start. So let me know what you think down below. If you're new here, do hit subscribe. Give this video a like. Thanks so much. Take care.